meet and praise God today? Y'all ready to meet and praise God today? All right, well, y'all stand up, get some blood pump. We're going to sing this morning. We're going to sing the old account was settled long ago. How many of y'all was glad that Jesus settled our account a long time ago? Somebody say amen right there. Amen. We might sing it one day. We might not sing. I don't know. Okay, here we go. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven old account was standing for sin yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. I went unto the keeper and said, Old oh, long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. And my record's clear today. For he washed my sins away When the old account was settled long ago O sinners, seek the Lord Repent of all your sin For thus he hath commanded That you would enter in And then if you should live A hundred years below Up there you'll not regret it You settled long ago, long ago Long ago, yes, the old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. Real fast, turn around and shake somebody's hand. Tell them you're glad to see him. cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name, here we go church, well glory to His name, glory to His name. To my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. On the second, well, I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides with him. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Let's give God glory this morning. Glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. On the last, well, I am so wondrously saved from sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name here we go quiet one more time glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name somebody give god a hand clap of praise this morning morning. I'm so glad you're here. Amen. I know we got a lot that's out sick this morning. So we want to go to the Lord in prayer, thanking him that we're here this morning. Also asking him to touch them who's sick in body that uh, they'll get to feeling better. We got some that's traveling today and uh, we got many that's watching by way of live stream. We'll say welcome to them. In a few minutes, we're going to worship the Lord by giving of our tithe and our offering. And uh, so we just want to go to the Lord in prayer. We want to thank the Lord for a good day. He's going to give us in the Lord's house. Amen. Ain't you glad you're alive? How many of you have already had the flu? 
Amen. God bless you. God. How many of you don't want the flu? Amen. God bless you. So here is your handshake from the preacher. Boom, yow. Amen. Amen. I didn't fly around through there because I'm trying to protect myself. Amen. Love you all. Glad you're here. Let's do this. Let's get our ushers in place this morning and uh, let's worship the Lord. Amen. You go ahead and be standing back to your feet. We got a couple more songs we're going to sing. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your house this morning. Lord, we want to lift those up, God, who's already, God, been battling the flu, coming through the flu, Lord. And we got many at home right now, God, Lord, there. Have, uh, have the bug, God. I ask you, God, to touch them, help them, heal them, Lord. I pray, Lord, for those of us who have not contacted it yet. God, you put a shield around us, Lord, and we won't have it either, Lord. But today, God, may we just uh, come in your house, Lord, and, and relax and rest, Lord. And we're around family this morning. And Lord, we want to lift you up. We want to magnify you and ask you, Lord, to have your way in every heart, mind, body, and soul. And today, Lord, as we freely and cheerfully give back that which you bless us with, Lord, would you take it, God? Would you bless the gift and the giver? In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people says, amen. Amen. You remain standing as we sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory Onward to the prize before us Soon His beauty will be home Soon the pearly gates will open We shall tread the streets of gold When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory Everybody will stay standing. We're going to sing one more song. But before we do, I wonder how many people in here would testify this morning, God's been good. Somebody testify God's been good to you. Even in your worst times, God's been good. When you feel like there's no hope, God's been good. When you're down on your luck, God's been good. When you're going through the storm, God's been good. When you're going through the fire, God's been good. When things don't add up on paper, God has been good. When you just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, can I tell you today, church, God has still been good to us. And what I would like for us to do this morning, I know it may not be your thing. You may say, I just don't feel like it this morning. But let's get into a heart of worship today. Let's get a heart of praise today as we sing to God. We're not singing to each other. You're not singing to me, and I'm not singing to you. But we're singing to the God in heaven who's been so, so good to us. And let's sing today, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good, He's so good to me, He answers prayers. How many prayers been answered today? He answers prayer, He answers prayer. He's so good to me. He loves me so. He loves me so. He loves me so. He's so good to how many of you can testify he saved you today he saved my soul he 
saved my soul. He saved my soul. He's so good to me. Let's sing to him one more time this morning. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to Let's pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, God. We thank you for loving us. And God, most of all, we thank you for being so good to us. Now, Father, I want to ask you as my pastor's approaching that you would give him the power of God, the passion and liberty. Use him like you've never used him before. Bless him this morning and give him the, the just, Lord God, the confidence to know that he is following you. I ask you, God, to do for him what only you can do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. One more hand clap of praise for God this morning. Yes, Lord. Amen, amen. You can be seated. Man, it's good to be in the Lord's house this morning. Amen. I don't know about you, but it seems like it's been a whole long, long time since I was in church, and it was just been a few days. Amen. It's amazing how uh, just a couple days in this world can make you feel the way you feel. Amen. But I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm glad you're back for week number four of our series, I Love My Church. I love my church. And, man, I appreciate you attending. And, man, if you have not been here every week, I encourage you to get with our media department and get a copy of the messages or go back online and, and uh, go to the archives. And I'm sure you can find it on there and watch how God has been using this series in our church to cultivate our heart into what church is really all about. I mean, so many times our, our, our mindset in the world is real that the church is just a place you go and, and just have a formality of religion or tradition or, or things like that. But the church is so, uh, so much more than those things right there. Matter of fact, God intended for the church just to be a place where sinners get saved, become a part of the family of God, and begin to love one another just like family. Family. Say amen right there. And we've been talking about many different things. I mean, we talked about how in our lives we build fences up and you know what? And we keep people out of our lives and we don't want people to know the real us. We'll keep our lawn in the front yard manicured real pretty, but we don't want nobody to see our backyard where the real us lives. Can somebody testify to that right there and how God came and man, he kicked the fences down. He tore the fences down. Amen. And because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can have life, but not just have life, but have it more more abundantly. And then we talked about last week about how that when, when God saves you, you know, there's a special gift that God puts down on the inside of you and we like it into being a superhero, you know, somebody like Superman. And we talked about the talent, you know, that Mike Tyson had. Everybody knows who Mike Tyson is. Man, he had a punch and a half. He could knock your lights out. Say amen right there. I would not want to get in the ring with Mike Tyson. Amen. But you know what? But the difference between Mike Tyson and Superman is this. Mike Mike Tyson would hit you and you'd fall right there at his feet. Superman hits you, he knocks you into the middle of next week. Say amen right there. Because he had a superpower. And guess what? When God saves you, he puts a gift down in the side of you. It is a supernatural gift from a super God who is all powerful, who enables you with the power to operate in that gift. And how that gift that God gives you is not for you. It's for other people. It's for other people. You see, one thing about church, and over the years, our mindset in this world, in this world realm, it's about what I can get. It's about me and what I got to have. Say amen. amen. This world owes who? Me. Yeah, and you know what? That's not true. That's not true at all. And you know what? That's far, far, far from the purpose that God left you here. God didn't save you and leave you on planet earth so that you may have more, obtain more, and get more, and have such a lovely life on earth. Because we all know that as long as your feet are planted on top of this soil, you're standing on a curse. Say amen. You're living in a sin-cursed world. You're never going to have 100% happiness. Say amen. You're never going to have 100% contentment. Say amen. You're never going to have 100% peace. Say amen. Why? Because you're living in a sin-cursed body. Say amen. In a sin-cursed world who's battling things that you cannot overcome. Say amen right there. But I'm glad that there is a hereafter. Say amen. I'm glad there's a day is coming that Jesus Christ is going to step out and take us out of here. Amen. 
Today we want to talk about something. We want to talk about trunks. Any of y'all ever had a hope chest? Or have one or had one? You know, a hope chest is something, you know, I've, I've, there's many different reasons, but, you know, my mama used to have one. And I asked her, you know, she asked her last night, where is it at? She said it finally fell apart. That's how long she kept it. But what's a hope chest, mama? And she told me years ago that a hope chest is something, you know, that a teenage girl might get. This is one reason that a teenage girl might get. And she starts putting things in there for the days that are going to come when she gets married and starts her own household. And then there's another reason for a hope chest. It's something that you get personally that you love and you cherish. And you put that thing in there because you're not going to sell it. You're not going to give it away. You want to keep it for days to come because, see, you're going to have children you're going to have grandchildren and one day you're going to walk up to that chest and, and you're going to open up that chest and you're going to reach down in there and you're going to pull out maybe it was a change purse that grandma had and how you remember when you was a child that little change purse that no matter what the need was in the house grandma could pull out that change purse and she may not pull out but two quarters she may not pull out but two dollars but every time there was a need there was something in that change purse that took care of the need and you remember how God took carry you through grandma's little change purse. Well, grandma's gone. She's in heaven now. But you want your children to understand how grandma trusted God, how grandma loved God, and how God supplied the need through grandma's little change purse. So you put that in there, you know, to, uh, to share the story. These treasures we hang on to, we don't do it just because of pleasure of hoarding. Say Amen. We hang on to them because we know they might mean something to those coming behind us. Maybe, maybe you know, it's, it's that change person like I talked about. Regardless of the reason, it's being saved because it holds hope. Amen. It holds promise. It holds memories. Maybe you ain't got a chest, but you got a box under your bed. You got a closet in your house. You got somewhere in your house that you got those things, man, that meant something to you. You know, maybe it was that Valentine card. Maybe it was that Mother's Day card, Father's Day card. Maybe it was that letter, you know, from a son or, or you know, or a family member who was going off to, uh, you know, to fight a war somewhere and they sent a letter back home, man, you held on to that thing and you put that thing up because of the memories, because you cherish those things. It holds value for the future. And to put it in a box for the time being is a sacrifice. Amen. You're putting that thing up and you're hiding it out of the way and you're putting it in there because you want it for the future. Listen, you can't use it right now because you want it available for someone else to have and to hold. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. A treasure box. A hope chest. This is the exact same concept that we're going to look at this morning. If you take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter number 4. The early church. And this, and this is what we're talking about this morning. This trunk, this hope chest. All of this is going to play in to a very serious way of us loving our church. In Acts chapter number 4, the early church, look at verse number through 32, excuse me, and your Bible should read like this as long as, and, and, and just like it is on the screen. And the multitude of them that believed were of one, what? And of one, remember that, neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was whose? His own. But they had all things, what? common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles feet and the distribution was made unto every man according as he had need let's pray Lord, I need your help. God, I need you to help me this morning, God, Lord, to slow down, not trace rabbit trails, but to bring this message across the way you deliver it to my heart, that it may take hold to the hearts of your people, our church, your church, the church, that we may become and do and be all that you'd have us to be. 
In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. When it comes to possessions, the first church knew how to help one another, to love one another. I wonder how long it took before someone decided they need to hang on to some of their stuff. What you find out in Acts chapter number four right here is they went and sold everything they had, and they come and they brought it to the church. And you know what? Then the church began to distribute as the needs would arise to take care of everybody. But I wonder how long they started doing this in the church before somebody said, you know what? I'm going to hang on to a little bit of it. You ain't got to get too far into it. I'm not going to chase this trail, but it's part of the message of illustration but there's a couple in this church right here in the first church you see you got to understand something ever since the fall in the garden man has been the same say amen ever since the curse came upon this place mankind has been the same the only difference today is this some are saved and some are lost it's been the same way there's two kinds of people it's those that's following God and those who wait it ain't based on color it ain't based on creed it's not based on religion. It's not based on nationality. There's two kinds of people on planet earth. Those who's going to follow the Lord and those who don't. So you don't get too far to the early church that you find a man and one by the name of Ananias and Sapphire who kept something back that belonged to the Lord. Now this ain't my message. I'm not preaching this, but I'll just tell you the outcome of Ananias and Sapphire. They're dead. And they're not dead because of old age. They're dead because they lied to the Lord. They held back, and God just struck them dead. You go read the rest of the story, because I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. Have you ever been to the beach? Have you ever been to the beach? You ever seen seagulls? You ever been sitting there, you know, and you got your homemade, or maybe you bought one of them frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at Walmart, and you're sitting out there at the beach, and you're eating your little peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you're eating chips, and here comes one seagull. And you know, you have, you have such a tender heart, God bless your soul. You tear a little piece of that hard crust off and you toss it out there to the seagull. And man, he gobbles it up. Less than five seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, here comes a whole flock of them suckers. Man, they come from everywhere. There's only one flying. You feed one, and they're coming from everywhere. You ever know what I'm talking about? And you know what? You throw one out there, and man, it is Katie bar the door. They're going to stomp on one another. They're going to peck one another, and they're going after to get that one crumb. Y'all ever seen the, uh, the movie? Uh, let me find my notes. Finding Nemo? Y'all, y'all like that movie? I started to pay the clip, but we're having so much trouble with our, with our stuff right here. I didn't want to ruin the service. So I'll just tell you what. The, there's a clip in the, finding the movie Nemo. And they're out there, and all of a sudden, these two fish, I forget their names because I'm not good on all that stuff, so I apologize for that. I should have went back and watched the movie 47 times. I would have remembered. But anyway, <laughs> two of the fish fall out there on the, on the little pier thing, the little dock where all the boats are at. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And, man, there goes some seagulls. Man, their eyes get out that big around. Hey, you know what? All of a sudden, they start a hollering. You know what they're hollering? What? Say it again. Say it again. Come on, say it again. You're a bunch of seagulls right now. Say it again. Come on. Mine, 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 mine. Say it. Mine, 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 mine. That's how you hear them seagulls is flying, man. It's mine, 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 mine. They're chasing those chasing those fish and they're trying to get away for their life. Mine, 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 mine. You know, I wonder, hey, that's a funny movie, you know, and and all that, but I wonder that if sitting in heaven right now, there's a place called the throne room of God. And sitting up on the throne room is God Almighty himself at the right hand of father is Jesus Christ but I wonder when he looks over the portal walls of heaven and he turns his ear towards the church house I wonder if he's here praise the Lord praise the Lord glory to God or is he here mine 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 you hear what I'm saying let's see Just like in that movie, just like a bunch of seagulls, all they cared about was who? Themselves. Themselves. And I wonder sometimes it's exactly the way we sound like when we start talking to God about our stuff and our money. Let's look at something. Look at verse number 32. We're talking about loving our church. You hang with me. The first church did something. Now listen, don't you want to be all that God would have you to be? 
oh my God, that was weak. Don't you want to be all that God would have you to be? And that in return would make the church all that he expects it to be. Which, believe, which makes us think and believe that at the end, we would hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, in order, listen to me, in order to find out maybe what God expects of you or the, the model church that God would have us to be. Now listen, the model church, you won't find it in the, part, in, in the Bible as big buildings, hey, you know, and family life centers and paved parking lot and well manicured lawns. You won't find that in the Word of God. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with big buildings. There's nothing wrong with family life centers. Thank God for the payment. You're not walking in mud this morning. Say amen right there. But the point is, in the Bible... Man, God's got a whole different perspective of what church is all about. Why? Because he's got a different perspective on what people are and who people are and what he's going to do for people. So we're going to look at the model church this morning and find out, Lord, what would you have me to be? Because if I'm doing, you're doing what you would have here, what he would have you to do, that would make the church be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the first thing we're going to, excuse me, learn is in verse number 32. The Bible says, in a multitude of them that believed, hey, that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, and they had all things common. The first thing they did was they released their grip. Amen. They released their grip. Not one of them claimed that anything belonged to him. In that verse, nobody claimed it's mine. It's mine. You know what? It ought not be a place in the house of God where somebody walks in and says, that's my seat. You've heard that before. That's, that's my seat. That's my parking place. You got mine. You got mine. No, my friend, in the early church, the first church, when the church was beginning, man, they released their grip. They understood something. Listen to me now. If you're taking notes, this ain't going to be on the screen, but it's in the Bible. The Bible says, if you're saved and born again, ye have been bought with a price. You're no longer... You're your own. You know who you belong to? You belong to God. And everything that you have belongs to God. The first thing the early church did is they lost their grip. They released it. In case we're quickly to say, well, they just didn't have a lot, so it was easy for them to have a looser grip. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Because it's Bible time. Yeah. Well, I beg to pardon the difference right there, because Ananias and Sapphire had enough that it caused them to think I need to hold on to some. So we can't use that. This is simply not the place today in this message, this hour, is not the place to make excuses for being a seagull. Because the truth is, it's not ours. It never was. It's God's. Everything you have. All you are is a bank. That's all you are. You're a bank. And God invests with us and hopes to see a good return on his investment. And his measurement for good return is how, listen, not how much you have in the end. Not, my, not how much you obtain going through life. But this is how God measures up. Remember, you're a bank. You've been bought with a price. But God don't leave you by yourself. God starts pouring into you. He don't just pour in knowledge. He don't just pour in wisdom. He gives you material things also. He pours into you. You ain't got your job because you went and finished college. You ain't got your job because of how much you know. You got your job. You getting a paycheck. You got your house that you live in. The car that you got. All of that that you have. Don't believe in you. Don't belong to you. But there's a God above that said, I saved that one right there. They need a job. Here's a job. They need a paycheck. Here's a paycheck. They need clothes on their back. Here's clothes on their back. They need food on their table. They need a car to drive. Everything that you have is God invested in you. And how God views his investment is based on how you're loving others. Let me say it again. His measurement for good return is how we love others with what we have. Release your grip. It's not yours. Now listen, this is a hard sermon. For me to hear as it is for you to hear. 
but you got to trust me. I know it ain't no simple message, and it's not the message of give to the church because that would be a whole lot easier to preach. This is not the standard giving message that folks like to grumble about. Every time I go to church, they're asking for money. It's not that kind of message. That's not at all what this passage is teaching. That's not at all what this book is teaching. Listen, it's not. It would be easier to say, give it all to the church and we'll be your clearinghouse. That'd be easy. But the truth is, the first church didn't demonstrate their love by giving to the corporate entity called the church. They loved by sharing everything with one another. Amen. Hear me this morning. I'm slowing down to make sure I get my points across. Amen. By giving to the personal entity called the church, which is the people. Right. And though the apostles were helping with distribution, clearly they weren't maintaining lawns in purchasing curriculum. And hear me say, there isn't anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with keeping the grass mowed, and there's nothing wrong with, per, uh, with uh, purchasing curriculum and all that we do. The fault comes when we fail to meet the needs of people. Yeah. Listen to me. When we fail to meet the needs of people because we're manicuring the lawns. Because we're buying curriculum. When we fail to meet the need of the people, and I understand something, there's a mentality of thinking the church will take care of it. That's the church's responsibility. Let the church help that family. Let the church help that need. Let the church take care of that. And I don't know where you've been at. I don't know what fog you've been stuck in. But the church is the people. There's that. Listen, there is no institute out here that's called the church. The church is not BB&T. The church is not Bank of America. The church is not Wells Fargo. The church is a group of people that saved by the marvelous grace of God who willingly and cheerfully give a tithe and an offering. So if you ain't giving, guess what? The church don't have no money. So therefore the church can't take care of no need. That is a seagull mentality. I'm keeping what's mine and let somebody else take care of it. But you don't understand. That's not the way God wants it to be. The early church released their grip and said, God, whatever's mine is yours. And you know what God did? He turned right around and took care of their very need. Listen, you got to release your grip. Number two, you got to tighten your belt. Tighten your belt. Look at 34 and 35. Neither was there any among them. That lacked. Now, you hold your finger right there and listen to this. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. And neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Nothing belonged to them. They realized that, but yet they had everything they need. You see that? They don't like nothing. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. What does tighten your belt mean? Making room in your budget to help others. That's exactly what the first church did. Now, look at this. It's supposed to stay open. See that chest I brought in right now? There's nothing in it. Nothing. Nothing. The first century church wasn't keeping hope chests like I refer to. They were not storing up for a rainy day. How I many of y'all got a rainy day storage? They weren't even hanging on to their personal property. They were liquidating. They were getting rid of the all so they could demonstrate. Listen, listen, I'm not preaching a Jim Baker philosophy. You hear what I'm saying? I am not preaching you sowed, you'll reap so much in return. That is not what I'm preaching. 
This is what I'm preaching is the way the Bible is teaching right here. All these people gave it. They was liquidating everything they had. They was giving it all because they loved their church. That's why they did it. They didn't go sell it all because the apostle said, go sell everything you got and bring it to the church, and we're going to give everybody a corner that they need and sit up there as tyrants. That ain't the way it was. That ain't the way it was at all. This is the early church. This is brand new to them. Man, they don't have a clue what I was going. All they know they once was lost, but now they're saved. But now all of a sudden they're looking around. I mean, they say this one over here is like it. And you know what? They're not, they, they don't have, the, uh, they having a need over here. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go sell and I'm going to go take care of their need. Next thing you know, everybody's selling, everybody's giving to take care of the need that was in the church. Why? Because of their love for the church. Now, in all honesty, I'm not proposing, believe me, I'm not proposing, you go put a for sale sign in your house, you sell your car, and we all move into the fellowship hall. (laughs) That is not what I'm preaching or teaching. Believe me, you don't want to live with me, and I know I don't want to live with you. Say amen. I'm simply suggesting When I say tighten our belt, listen to me, that if our, listen, let me say this, let me pastor for a few minutes. Some of you don't and can't, you say, pay your tithe. You can't give in the offering. Service after service, that plate goes by. You don't put nothing in it, but you have it to give, but you don't. So what I'm preaching and teaching that is that love for the church, I'm simply suggesting that if our lifestyles, mine included, keep us from being generous with the people around us, it's time to tighten our belts just as those in the early church were doing. Maybe a less expensive car. Maybe it's time to let go of something you don't really need. You know, maybe you're paying $200 a month for cable, but you only watch Channel 9 News. That don't make sense. Or maybe I just need to live on some kind of budget. You know, some people's budget is this. Get paid on Friday, go buy for the kids Friday night at Walmart, go out to eat on Saturday, be broke on Sunday, can't give God nothing, and complaining on Monday because the light bills do. Somebody say amen. Maybe we just need to tighten our belt. Maybe it's just time we just tighten up and say, man, you know what, I ain't been loving the church and, and you know, and I'm struggling, this, that, and the other. Here's a good way to find out. Here's a good example. This is what I did, okay? This is Tim Blue person. This ain't the pastor. This is me when God gave me this message and I was dealing with this and I got down to that and God started saying, you know what, maybe your lifestyle, maybe you ought to be giving more. And I'm thinking, man, I could give more. This is what God said to me. Well, I want you to do something. I ain't lying. This ain't no evangelistic strength. This is God's honest truth. My wife don't even know it. God told me, he said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get you your calculator out of your smartphone. And I want you to start adding up everything you spent on deer hunting this year. And I want you to see if what you spent on deer hunting, is it more or less than what you gave to the church? Now listen here. I'm not telling you the outcome of that because I don't want to make it look like I'm on an ego trip or this, that, and the other. But my point is this. There wasn't much difference from what I was spending on things out here in the world, not just deer hunting, than what I was giving to the church. And you know what this preacher, this kid had to do? I had to get some things right with the Lord because you see, I look back and say, hey, I'm doing pretty good. I'm giving my 10%. And that's usually where most people stop. I'll give an offering every once in a while. But truth of the matter is, I could be doing a whole lot more. Why? If I just tighten up my belt, change a little bit of things. I don't need two code reds just because it says the first was a buck fifty, but you can get two for three dollars. I ain't got to spend that extra buck fifty. Y'all understand what I'm saying? There's ways of doing things. But why? Because I love my church. I love my church. Why do you love your church? Because Christ gave his life for the church. And if it wasn't for Jesus, I'd be in hell this morning. Listen to me. I know some people ain't going to pay no attention to what I'm saying, but listen. I can't chase that. Listen, what am I talking about? If everybody who's saved and part of the church would release their grip, tighten their belt, 
there should be no reason there'd be a single mother in our church right. having to drive a bus or call an Uber or a taxi to get to work because somebody seen the need and took care of it. You hear what I'm saying? Listen, maybe, maybe there's a family in the church, and we have one that's affiliated whose dad just lost his job and might be losing their home. Well, let the church help them. Man, what a fantastic idea. But the church can't if we don't release our grip, right. tighten up our belts. What are you talking about? I'm talking about simply as, listen, the needs I'm talking about. Maybe we got an elderly person, a retiree in the church who we don't know about, and we'll get to that in a minute, who's sitting at home and having to decide over their next meal or their prescription to keep them alive. You hear what I'm saying? But if we would release our grip and tighten our belt and bring down the fences and stand in other people's yards and get to know one another, they wouldn't have to tell their need because some family member in the church, I didn't talk about physical blood family, I'm talking about the church family, would know what that need was. It was stand up and say, hey, we got an elderly person over here. We got a single mama over here. Hey, we got a college student who's about ready to drop out because they don't have the money to pay their tuition to go to school. And we need to keep them in there because they need their education. Say amen right there. You see what I'm talking about? It's releasing our grip. It tightened up our belt. It's taking care of the needs of others. Amen. Listen. Maybe it's just the preacher letting go of a code red to give an extra couple bucks. But just imagine if everybody let go of their code red and gave a couple extra bucks to help that we could give. Maybe it's just letting go of that Starbucks coffee you like to drink every week. Maybe instead of buying a $5 cup, you can buy a $5 half a gallon of Folgers. Say amen right there. You see, there's ways. But the problem is, I ain't giving up my Code Red. I ain't giving up my Starbucks. That's the only thing in life I get to enjoy is a code red. I don't drink Budweiser no more. I don't do drugs. And I'll go out here and just blow money. All I want is a simple code red, two or three a day. And I get mad when I go walk into IGA and they ain't got no 12 packs in there. I get upset. All I want is a simple code red. I sound like them seagulls. Mine, 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 mine. But there's a single mom over there hurting. There's an elderly person back there suffering. You understand what I'm trying to say? Now listen, I'm not talking about the homeless folk on the street corner, even though we need to help them too. But the way we communicate love for our church is by making sure we aren't neglecting the needs of one another. And here's a hard statement to say. The only way we can take care of the needs of others is we have to know what the needs are. And the only way we can know what the needs are, this is why it's a five-part series, is because, you see, you've got to tear down some fences and get involved with other people's lives to find out what the needs are. And listen, and when we're finally able to peer past the fence. We need to be ready to act on what we see because we've tightened our belts. And see, then, when you release your grip and you tighten your belt, then you're able to do number three. Give it all away. Give it all away. Uh Uh-uh. Somebody got to take care of me. The Bible says... More blessed to give than to receive. Once the first church ditched, listen to me, once the first church ditched their mind, mind mentality, no one ever had a need. 
The reason there's so many needs even in this sanctuary right now is because of the mind, mind, mind mentality. But as soon as the first church ditched their mind, 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 it's all mind mentality, and gave all that they had, all of a sudden, all the needs were deplenished. Amen. Needs were always met. Now, I'm not saying they all went and got their nails done. I'm not saying they all went and got peekaboos in their hair. I'm not saying they all got new suits and new clothes and they all got, was able to go out and eat at Texas Roadhouse every weekend. But what I am saying is all their needs were met. You see, there is a difference between needs and your wants. You need to eat every day, but you ain't got to spend 40 bucks on a meal every time you go to eat. Say amen right there. Listen, once they ditched that mentality, their needs was always met, so fervently met that this passage says, and, uh, and what was the result of that generosity? Look at verse number 33. And with great power gave the apostles witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. There was a testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. People knew the truth. Listen to me. People knew the truth of Jesus because the apostles in the first century church were busy giving their money and possessions to one another. It wasn't a service project. It was wasn't a homeless shelter. It wasn't a missions program. It was one another. The testimony was present because they were loving one another. This is just an awkward message, ain't it? This is awkward and backward, ain't it? It ain't your normal things you hear on a Sunday morning. And frankly, it is an awkward passage here in Acts chapter number four. We've spent centuries trying to get beyond the four walls of the church to impact the community, to become more than a holy huddle or a spiritual country club. And now it feels like this passage is saying that we got it all wrong. No, my friend, that's not what it's saying at all. I think what is illustrated is simply this. In our passion, in our favor, to reach beyond our walls, we can never forget to also reach within the walls also. A.K.A. nobody left behind. We can't get so busy looking out there that we forget about those who's inside here. For how can we help those out there if the ones on the inside is not sustained and taken care of? We have needs represented in this room right this second that none of us knows us think about. Maybe even you've recognized your own situation while I've been preaching. Maybe it's another need. We must be loving our church enough to see those needs. And then like the first church, we must be willing to sacrifice. To meet all Amen. the needs. Ain't you tired of ordinary? I mean, that's why some of you change your fashions all the time because you get tired of the same old thing, right? You know, let's do something courageous. Let's just do something, well, Crazy. Amen. You want to? And why not? We're here. Come on, wake up. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when you was lost and somebody said, drink another one, you were saying, pop the top, past the bottle. Amen. When you was out there in the world living like crazy, you know what I'm saying? You was willing to jump in there and do anything. You know, the worst thing you can say to a redneck is, I dare you. <laughs> so let's do something crazy. I mean, let's do something crazy. Let's, let's mimic the first church. Amen. Let's do something out of the ordinary. No, I ain't got a bunch of for sale signs out here behind the thing. I'm going to give everyone a for sale sign. <laughs> but let's do something crazy. What is that? Well, I got some cash in my pocket right there. The offer place doesn't go. I had a little left. Listen, that ain't all I got. Here's some cash. Come start me some music, Jay. Oh, I 
ain't know I had that much. There's 300 bucks. I prepared for this. I ain't going to lie to you. I knew what I was going to do. I prepared for it. Had it in my wallet. I normally don't carry a wallet. I normally carry a little money clip. Keep all my stuff. I ain't got a money clip. While I was preaching, did you hear me say something while ago about saving up for a rainy day? Preacher, the preacher. You got your wallet. And he reminded me, the store back here in the back is a hundred dollar bill I've had for God knows how long. That's all the cash I got. Symbolic to Acts chapter number four, I gave all I had to the church to meet the needs of the church. And all I'm asking you this morning is I love my church is we've tore down fences. Man, we've stepped in other people's yards. And all I'm doing is asking you to ask God. God, you know what you got. You know what you're holding on to. Show them that you love your church. Maybe it's just your Sunday afternoon lunch. Maybe it's some change you got back at the convenience store this morning on the way to church. Whatever it is, be like the first church, the first century church. Give all that you got. You're not going to go hungry. You're not going homeless. We just want to love the church the way God has called us to love the church. And what if we ask God to bless this offering we're about in our giving Amen. and use it to communicate love for His church? This offering right here that you're giving, it's not going to pay the light bill. Right. It's not going to fix the light bulbs. It's not going to keep the yard mowed. This is you're giving all that you got. All that's on you. This is all I got, Lord. But I know, God, that there's somebody sitting on my road right now. They probably got a need in their life. I don't know what that need is, but, Lord, if I can help take care of that need, I'm going to give you all I got. Here, Lord, here it is. I'm giving it to you. I don't know, but I'm starting to feel the Lord on this stuff right here. And he said, you know what? Because I love my church. I love that one sitting beside me. I love that one sitting in front of me. I love that one sitting behind me. Maybe you're sitting there and you're saying, but preacher, I ain't got no cash. I don't ever carry cash. It's okay. You got plastic, don't you? We're living in modern times. And you know what? We got a thing out back. You can go swipe it and say you know what Lord you told me to give you fill in the blank and this is what I've given to take care of the need of the one that's sitting in front of me that's sitting behind me those of you watching on live stream this morning you're sitting there saying man I wish I was there so I can give you can click off go to a greater life.net and hit the donate but what I'm trying to get you to see is hey we don't need money to pay the light bill say amen we don't need money to pay the preacher's salaries say amen but what we need is for you and I to see that hey there's needs around us and I want to love both them and I'm giving all I got I'm giving all I got listen while the music's already playing you've seen it Minnie's already got up you're sitting there don't be an eye sapphire you got it, but you're going to hold on to it. This ain't in my notes, and I'm about done. Because you release, you tighten it, and then number three, I don't even know where it went to. We give it all away. 
And I know this ain't normal. This right here is not normal. But it is one of the ways we communicate love to one another is through simple generosity. Preacher, why are you doing this? Because there's needs in this building. And you know what your needs are. Now, some of your needs is because you don't live on a budget. You don't give to God. You don't tithe. You don't do all those things, and you just make it one way to the other. That's not what I'm preaching on. I'm talking about today we're loving on people. You have a need. I don't know what that need is. But we're changing that kind of stuff around the church. One way we can show our love is through generosity. Generosity. In another way, it's through honesty. Generosity and honesty. So this is how we're concluding our services today. You're here this morning. You're lost without God. For God shall love the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You're here this morning. You need Jesus. You meet me at the back door and I'll gladly lead you to Jesus. Whisper in my ear with a handshake and say, Preacher, I need Jesus. But this message is geared towards the church. And some of you, you have sacrificially, what you did when you got up and you took all the cash that you had I came prepared. Listen to me. This is the way God works. I came prepared to give $200. The other $100 in my pocket is supposed to go to Miss Rhonda's for winning the good news table last week. I forgot to give it to Miss Rhonda. So guess what I had on me? And God says, give it all. I had to give it all. He reminded me, you got that $100 bill stuck back there. I could have easily just said, this is just illustration. Yeah. Just to tell the people and show the people. But you can't just tell. You got to show. You got to give it all. And it's a sacrifice. But you can never, ever out give God. Why? Here, my mentality, your mentality is a sacrifice. I'm giving up. Man, what could I do with that extra hundred bucks? What could I do with that extra two hundred bucks? I could do a lot of things, but remember, you and I are just banks. Banks. God invests in me. All I am is a channel. God gives through me what he will not give to me. But while I allow him to give through me what he will not give to me, he takes care of me in all aspects of life. So this is what we're going to do. Is you've been generous. Now it's time to be honest. We're going to conclude our service, and we're going to conclude it here in a minute with a song. At the end of the service, I'm going to be standing back there shaking hands like I always do. But you have a need. You're standing up here. It's going to be Miss Tammy Armstrong. Come on, Miss Tammy. Remember I said honesty and generosity. You're welcome, any one of you, to come by and take whatever your need is out of this. And write down in a journal, today, God took care and you fill in the need. You hear what I'm saying? Honesty. And take out. Take out what you need. 
You, gotta, you, gotta, uh, you ain't got no groceries at the house. You think you need 40, 50, 60 bucks to buy you some groceries? You're going to come up here and you're going to say, Miss Tammy, God, I have a need this morning, and I believe the Lord will give me $60 to take care so I can buy some groceries. You're going to write it down. You're going to come over here, and Mr. Graham's going to help you get 60 bucks out, and you're going to put that $60 in, and you're going to walk out the door, and you ain't going to be ashamed of it. You ain't going to let go of that pride because you see you got a need, and today God has met your need, but you know what? He ain't going to sit there and just drop it in your lap. You're going to have to do something about it. You're going to have to get up, come, and be honest. And you say, but preacher, that, that money's going to run out. I know it will. I know the box is probably going to get empty. But you know what we're going to do? You're going to come by, and you're going to look in there, and there ain't going to be nothing. You're not going to be disheartened, because you're going to walk over to Miss Tammy, and you're going to write down in that book, I have a need. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to take those needs. We're going to pray over that, and we're going to watch God. God, through the church, take care of those needs. It's high time that God's people start loving the church the way God instituted for the church to be. Listen. God wants us to be a people who share our needs as generously as we share our possessions. There's nothing wrong with telling what you need. That's why you're going to write that need in the journal. Now understand me. This exercise is as much about making sure everyone's needs are met as it is about making sure we're willing to share those needs as we have them. This is a hard message today. It's hard to preach. But listen, if we'll loosen our grip, tighten our belts, And be generous and honest. He won't be here in my, my, my. But he'll be here and worthy as the Lamb of God. Lord, I love you. I give unto you. And you believe what you want to believe. But when my kids are being stingy and my kids ain't wanting to share, my kid better not ask me for nothing when I walk into Walmart say amen. amen. But if my kids are shared and my kids' attitudes are right, I'm more out to give. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Is Josh back in here yet? Where's my pianist? I love my church. Amen. Tear down the fences. Preacher, I just can't walk up there and, and write down my need. Preacher, there's no way I could walk up there. I got too much pride to walk up there Come on. and take money out of a box and people looking around. Because you see, I'll be honest with you, we, we put on a good. That's a fence. Remember Mr. Wilson? That's all you ever seen of Mr. Wilson. Well, it's time this church, you, tear down that fence. You got a need? Listen, we've all stood in a need. The church has put food on my table as a young man, a kid. The church has kept the heat on in my house before. I've stood in front of the church. Go ahead and play, Laura. I've stood in front of the church. As people walk by me and my sister and my mama hugged on me. I love you, son. I love you. you slip a piece of money in my mama's head to help take care of the need in our life. It's time that the church got back to what the church is there for. Taking care of one another. Loving on one another. We've gotten so private in our lives. Listen to me. We've gotten so private in our lives. We don't want nobody to know nothing about us because we want to make sure that the world thinks that we got it all together. Well, let me let you in on a secret. We know you ain't got it together. Right. Amen. Why? Because ain't none of us got it together. I know you're struggling. Why? Because we all have struggles. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I don't know if how you woke up this morning, but pinch yourself. 
You're feeling the same thing I'm feeling. Yes, sir. Flesh. Flesh. Let's be like the first church. Generous and honest. Let's all stay in. I ain't making no announcements. If you don't know what's going on, sit back down when I'm done. Watch the slides. But do come back tonight at 5 o'clock for our evening service. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to the back. I don't see no first time guest here today. I'm not going to the back. I'm going to stand over here. Actually, go lock that front door. The front door is out of business. It ain't working properly this morning. See, something just happened to it. It won't open now for some reason. It's got something to do with that metal thing going to that other shaft on the other side. We'll get that taken care of in a little while. I want you to exit out. Come by. Because I want to tell you, I love you. And I appreciate you. And I'm glad to be your pastor. And I'm glad you're here this morning. And I'm glad that many of you heard the message, participated. Feels good to give, don't it? Now, I don't care what the devil tells you in your mind. That was my last $5. Well, you know it, and God knows it. You didn't need that Twix and Mountain Dew anyway. You've been saying you're going to be indicted since January the 1st. But watch this, and I'm praying and we're done. Watch this. You gave sacrificially. You marked this preacher's words down. Watch what God does in your life. Watch. I ain't going to say what he's going to do because I don't know. I'm not God. But watch. I promise you, somehow, some fashion, some form, he's going to bless you. What do you mean? A blessing like this right here? You're going to pull out on the highway and there ain't going to be no nails laying out there from the dump trucks coming out of the landfill. It's going to go in your tire that would have gave you a flat tire. Would have costed you some money this week. God just picked up the metal out there. You say, preacher, you're crazy. How do you know he didn't? How do you know he didn't? Lord, We love you. God, we thank you for all that you're doing and what you're going to do. God, we thank you, Lord, for this offering that has been given this morning above, beyond, God, what we ever thought we was going to do today. So now I pray, God, you multiply it, you take it, you take care of the needs of the people. Go with us to the next appointed time in Jesus' name. We're going to sing a song and you'll be dismissed. Oh, good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me, He answers prayer. me so he loves me so he loves me so he's so good to me let's sing it one more time he saved my soul can we be happy about that today he saved my soul he saved my soul he's so good to me let's brag on god one more time god is so good 
God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for being so good. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, dismiss, church.